short uh, well you could ask any question during the lecture as, as <laughs> you have done so but if you feel I have one uh, yeah uh, this is a beautiful theory but uh, it's quite abstract and uh, in the field of quantum information there are a lot of uh, work about entanglement uh, which relates to non-locality and uh, from such a uh, point of view, uh, this uh, common cause, this flow is, uh, uh, in what sense, the help to understand the uh, entanglement. Uh, for example, the, can we understand the uh, correlation um, uh, existing in the entanglement? Can be explained by some common cause or some I think this is a very interesting issue. I don't have a satisfactory answer to that, but let me say in the beginning. Because what, what I have uh, described here is the explanation of correlation, no matter whether the correlation is coming from entanglement or not. Okay, so here, the, the, the common cause principle uh, is about correlation, ordinary correlation between two events, A and B. And from the, again, from the perspective of the principle, uh, it, it doesn't matter, or it doesn't play any role anyway, whether this correlation is the consequence of an <coughs> entangled state, or it's just a classical correlation. So the, it's insensitive, the, the common cause is insensitive to that very crucial difference. So what you're asking is really, an intriguing question, is there a notion of explanation in terms of common cause, which would not be insensitive to the uh, origin of the correlation? I think that uh, that's a very interesting question, and I don't have a, an answer to that. What would be the notion of explanation in a common cause type explanation of correlations that are results of entanglement? Or, to put it differently, what would be the common cause type explanation of entanglement itself? Okay, uh, I I think that's an intriguing issue, and I I, I don't know the answer. I don't know the answer to that. Uh, I I haven't seen any attempt, although I think it would be conceptually very interesting because of course entanglement uh, is crucial, and the correlations I have talked about here in this quantum field theory context do emerge from entangled states. We have seen that there are consequences, but if you didn't see, but I, I made it more or less clear that it is a consequence of the violation of Bell's inequality in quantum state theory, that is to say it's an entanglement phenomenon. Correlations are coming from that, but the notion of common cause uh, uh, it's not, I, I would say, it's not sophisticated enough to explain uh, the origin of the correlation. So that's an intriguing issue. So, if I want to understand, is, is there a notion of classical correlation versus non-local correlations in quantum theory? I like the very same. Well, local, uh, th there is, in this quantum field theory framework, there is a difference because the, co the correlation here is always, since, since all the observables carry with themselves a label as to where they are in, in space time, because all the local observables coming from an algebra which is associated with a particular space-time region, all the observables carry a label with them very openly. I'm from this region, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you, if you display a correlation between local observables, uh, that correlation will be local in that sense. You know the locality relations in the co of the correlated entities. So, uh, So the space, so there is a particular 
type of local correlations locally in that sense, which is not the local in which you would use the term local, uh, there's a particular type of local correlation, namely the correlation between space-like separated entities, which is very intriguing, which is very much crying out for explanation. So maybe I can reformulate to see whether I understood this as an outcome. So the common cause can be what I mean, we don't have any distinction between a classical common cause or a quantum common cause. But you know, in, in the bad experiment you have common source, you send entangled particles, but you could also send classical random variables, like hidden variables. So yeah, the common cause would be whatever. Well, not not whatever, perhaps. Um, I mean, here you have a theory which specifies, in principle, everything there is, namely the observables there on the space time. Okay, and we are asking whether there is a common cause type observable somewhere specified by the theory. So it's not just any. In that sense, in the sense of being part of the theory, which is quantum, quantum field theory, it is a quantum common cause. Okay. So it's not just any. It's when I'm asking whether the theory is closely complete, I'm asking whether there are observables specified by that very much quantum theory. Uh, whether such entities exist. In that sense, they are not classical. The other reply in that connection is that, of course, when you relax the notion of common cause by allowing the thing to be non commuting with the uh, correlated entities, you explicitly allow for the quantum to influence the notion because non commutativity. Non commutativity is a typical quantum phenomenon. So you might want to even say that it really, the truly non classical common cause is the one which does not commute with the correlated entities. Yes? You now talking about uh, algebra. This is uh, the one of the formalists for quantum probability. And also the usual quantum mechanics is also another um, theory of non quantum probability. And, and the, mm, even the finite dimensional people of spaces uh, describes uh, such kind of entanglement. Yes. And then uh, they. It, Describe the uh, experiment just using only the uh, two dimensional and special tensor for that. Yes. Uh, but this is one formalism for quantum probability theory. And then uh, you can investigate uh, such kind of uh, causal completeness uh, uh, other than quantum field theory. Yes. In more general. <coughs> context of the general theory. In that sense, you can, uh, can you say that the, in ordinary quantum mechanics, uh, uh, in the sense of the, this inquiry, however, uh, if you describe the same physical phenomena inside the algebra in some way, uh, then uh, you can make that theory to be corporate. In that sense, the, your uh, algebraic quantum field theory is more a uh, complete theory to describe quantum field. Can you do such kind of the explanation of the uh, superiority of the field theory compared with the ordinary quantum field theory? Well, the algebraic version is uh, if the, one, the, this, the advantage of the field theory approach is that the spatial temporal conditions are very explicit there. So when you are saying for, say, ordinary quantum mechanics that uh, the observables are 
n times n2 times n2 two dimensional EPR situation. Okay? And then you say that this is space life from this, then this is a very informal and not operationalized plane. It's just intuitively there because, of course, if you have a entangled state and you measure from that here and there, that, that's the model. It, it is not part of this model explicitly that that thing, that thing is somewhere, which is space-like from that thing, which is also somewhere. So this spatial-temporal intuition, which is very much important in connection with the standard EPR kind of situation, is explicitly present in the quantum field theory framework. Again, because observers carry a label with them, I'm here and there. So uh, um, while I would not say that that problems within that problems associated with that situation can be solved in the field theoretical framework, but I think the field theoretical framework is the proper approach towards the problem of whether causal explanations are always possible, which satisfy our intuition about a spatial temporal causality. Because the spatial temporal causality intuition is explicitly expressed in the formalism in that field. Excuse me. Yes. In spite of your claiming uh, the explicit uh, leveling of the space-time uh, structure, uh, in view of the isomorphisms uh, among all the different local subalgebras seems to show the, how to say, uh, absence of such uh, uh, explicit leveling in spite of uh, our formulation. So the, for me, uh, such a way of leveling is uh, still insufficient. Okay, good. Uh, you are referring to the limitations of the kind of field theory I have talked about. Namely, it's on flat Minkowski space-time. There is an isomorphism of the space-time, as you say. And that has limitations, you're right. So, to which I would reply the following. Raise the same type of question, if you can, on a quantum field theory, which is on a curved space-time. Now, we do know that there are problems with that, of course, but that would be the, the way to go. If you are unhappy, as I think you should be unhappy about the symmetry, too strong symmetry assumptions in this kind of field theory, then the way to go to make it better, to make the treatment better, is to, to consider quantum field uh, theories which are more realistic. And uh, that, that, that would be the way to go. I do not like to go to the direction of how space-time quantum field theory, but uh, my claim is uh, just the mutual inclusion relations among different isomorphic uh, local subalgebras must be regarded as the most important uh, piece of information regarding uh, space-time patterns. And uh, this can be somehow compared with uh, our familiar observation about uh, Hilbert space structures. Uh, if uh, two Hilbert spaces have uh, the same dimensionality, they are very isomorphic as Hilbert space. Yes. And uh, uh, the isomorphisms among different local subalgebras uh, tend to show the uh, similar features. Uh, for instance, in the context of uh, uh, Subfactor inclusions. In this uh, context, too, we encounter the uh, isomorphic uh, subalgebras. But uh, the inclusion relations uh, tell us uh, their the, uh, structural feature. Yes, that, that's true. So, okay, uh, I have not 
talked about this, not, not emphasized this aspect, but if you remember, there was a slide here about the type of local algebras. It's a result of quantum field theory to show that the cone algebras under certain conditions, the double cone algebras are all type three, and I have not stated this, but actually more is true, that they're not just type three, but that they are type three one, and they are hyperfinite as well. And there's only one type of hyperfinite factor in every category, so there's only essentially confirming your point, all the double cone algebras are the same. Okay, isomorphic, this is what you have emphasized. Um, this is true, so the real content, the, the content of the theory is, this, is, this was your claim and this is the standard view, is not just in the algebras themselves, but in how the algebras are uh, related to each other in the net, okay? That, that, is, that is completely true, and I have not emphasized that there's a novel one which I have not emphasized, and that is true. Um, and it has far-reaching consequences and features as well, how this inclusion is, is in uh, one of them. One is that the split inclusion property, namely that if you have a Okay, there, there are, there are, there's more to say here. There would be a whole course to, to, to give on this. Uh, uh, because of the time, and the so okay, okay. Uh, uh, continue the discussion in, uh, in a time more. Okay, uh, good. And I have an announcement about the, our schedule. Uh, tomorrow morning, we start at uh, 10.30. Uh, this is okay. And uh, this is the uh, uh, final lecture. Uh, and uh, on Saturday, uh, and tomorrow afternoon, uh, we couldn't uh, keep this room. Um, however, we have the uh, small uh, next room. So if you want to uh, use your uh, own work, um, you can use the next room. Uh, and uh, on Saturday, um, we are planning to have a workshop. And uh, now we're planning to have a uh, uh, talk. And if anyone uh, wants to uh, give a talk on Saturday, uh, please let me know. <laughs> and uh, this is uh, uh, in the uh, afternoon on Saturday. and start at uh, 1.30, in the uh, same as uh, today and yesterday. In this room? This room. Is it in Japanese or not? Ah, uh, in English. <laughs> in English, yes. Because okay. I asked asked uh, Francesco about this, and he did, couldn't confirm that it would be in English, so I was just wondering. Ah, so yes. Saturday afternoon, which day is today, by the way? Saturday is the uh, uh, 25th. Yeah. 25th. And today is the 23rd? Yeah, the day after tomorrow. Tomorrow is Friday, and uh, Saturday okay. day after tomorrow. Yeah, OK, okay. so. Tomorrow is the week of the, uh, uh, in the morning. At 10 30. Tomorrow 10.30 I'm speaking. And the Saturday we, we have the workshop in the afternoon. At 1.30 here. Yeah. yeah. And uh, on Sunday uh, we are just uh, under uh, planning. We may have, we may have uh, discussion in the morning or Sunday. Uh, Good. But not yet. So we, we announce uh, tomorrow or Good. on Saturday. Good. So I see you then tomorrow at 10.30. Those of you who are still interested in what I have to say, and in the afternoon, the workshop yeah. then. Okay. at 1.30, right? Yes, yeah, on Saturday. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, to, tomorrow afternoon? Tomorrow afternoon, we have uh, uh, no uh, organized. Uh, yes, and we have to run that. We have to run that. But we, we can uh, gather privately and uh, discuss the or uh, work in the whole world. We, we keep the next room. Okay. Right. Register right. room two. Sorry? We, we keep the lecture room to go tomorrow afternoon. Yes, I understand. Tomorrow I'm morning we can use it. And good. your lecture, uh, yeah. Yes, okay, good. Okay, thank you. Let's uh, be again. Thank you. Thank you.